Hello, and welcome to the session at Open Source Summit Japan uh, called Planning for a Multi-Chain World, DLT Interoperability and Integration Technologies. I'm Brian Bellendorf. I'm Executive Director of Hyperledger, and I'll tell you a little bit more about Hyperledger in just a bit, but I'm joined here today with uh, two colleagues, uh, Tracy Kurt, who's a Senior Technology Architect for Accenture, and Shingo Fujimoto, who's a senior researcher for Fujitsu Labs. Uh, we're going to talk about DLT interoperability in the context of a really exciting project at Hyperledger called Cactus. Shingo will walk us through what Cactus is, and then we'll have a panel conversation uh, amongst the three of us about, about the technology and DLT interoperability in general. Next slide. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, we're here with Hyperledger. All three of us have been involved with the project for a long time, actually. Uh, uh, myself for uh, just, uh, just over four years now, uh, and Tracy, not too much less than that. Next slide. Hyperledger is a global cross-industry open source software initiative advancing business blockchain technologies. And business blockchain might sound like a contradiction in terms if most of you know it as the underlying technology behind Bitcoin and Ethereum and other, other interesting cryptocurrency projects, uh, but it actually has uses far beyond trading tokens or, or trying to mint money out of thin air. Uh, it actually uh, has a lot of applicability to those kinds of business challenges that have to do with maintaining a ground truth, a system of record, a single source of truth, which is really hard to do in distributed databases and distributed systems in general. And so Hyperledger is a home for the development of these technologies to go out and build different blockchain networks. But it is ultimately up to you and the companies out there in any given use case to set up that network using these technologies and piece them together. Next slide. Uh, it is a project hosted by the Linux Foundation, as we mentioned, uh, and as that we enjoy all the benefits of being, uh, uh, you know, on that Linux Foundation infrastructure. Uh, Hyperledger is also not paying developers to write code. It really depends upon organizations like Accenture and Fujitsu and, and hundreds of other companies, thousands actually across the whole of the Linux Foundation, working together to build open source software. Next slide. And actually within Hyperledger, we have a number of different, what we call ledger platforms for building these kinds of networks. Some of them that are very widespread today and, and really the default for building business blockchain networks like Hyperledger Fabric. Some that are focused on digital identity like Hyperledger Indy. Some that are focused on some of the cryptocurrency community technologies, such as Hyperledger Bezu, which is an implementation of the Ethereum platform, uh, and other interesting angles. Uh, Hyperledger Eroha is a token-based system that's very much focused on digital assets. Uh, Hyperledger Burrow, another take on the Ethereum space. But we found it was actually useful as well to also work on components that can feed into these uh, ledger platforms and connect between them. So for example, Hyperledger Avalon, which is really focused on confidential components computing, uh, Hyperledger Caliper, which is really a benchmarking platform, Hyperledger Ursa, which is a whole lot of underlying cryptographic uh, uh, routines and embedded as a library inside of some of these platforms. And then next slide, the one we're going to talk about today, which is Hyperledger Cactus, uh, which is a really exciting domain. And so with that, I think I'd like to turn the, the microphone, so to speak, over to Shingo. Shingo, take it from here. Thank you, Brian. <clears throat> Um, my name is Shingo Fujimoto from Fujitsu Labs. So the, I'm be honored to introduce our project Cactus. So the, uh, let's start from the explanation about to the Cactus. So the, uh, the, well, let me explain about to the back, little background for the Cactus project. So the, as you can see, the, we today we can see the uh, multiple blockchain on the marketplaces. And uh, but uh, however, the those uh, the area of the industry is uh, the keep separated. So the uh, the so uh, the the uh, to the to uh, the to better world to form the better world, we better to keep uh, the remove to the such barriers between the industries, and we better to uh, merge them to the into the single spaces. 
So the uh, the, that could be possible to uh, the, to interworking with uh, such a blockchains in uh, for the trading. Uh, that, that is a world we are aiming to uh, the, to uh, to enable the such a uh, the trade um, uh, across the regions. <clears throat> Uh, so let me explain about the issue for the such a uh, interworking stage, uh, interworking scenes. So the, uh, the just imagine about the uh, the shopping scene on the some of the customers who want to buy the item from the shops. So the, that is quite easy in the real world because of the they are be uh, in person, so the, uh, the they can give the money and getting the, the item. So there is no doubt or tra uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the problem. However. <clears throat> If we are talking about the, uh, the, if we are mapping to the those mechanism for the uh, the blockchain ledger technologies, uh, the, that is totally uh, the different. So the uh, the instead of the trust between the in persons, uh, the we when the RS sending to the money to the Bob and the uh, the, uh, the well transferring the ownership of the item from the Bob to the RS, that is a totally the parallel world. So there is no way to synchronize those trades. So the uh, the the problem is how we can build the trust between the uh, the the trust across the regions. So that is the issue to be solved by the, our project. So the looking at the uh, the media's uh, exp, uh, the the observation would be uh, like uh, one example. Like uh, this is a citation from the article of the uh, published by the Gardner. Uh, that, that clearly said to the uh, the the current blockchain technology had the uh, the problem for the interoperability perspective and. Uh, uh, we need to solve that problem uh, the, with some technologies. So the uh, when we realize the such a problem, uh, the we uh, the hyperledger realize to solve the, that problem for the blockchain markets. So the uh, the uh, so uh, the we some we need to the uh, not invent, but we need to create some new way for the doing the interoperability. That is the background of the, our project. Now the, uh, the this is a hyperledger cactus. So the the uh, the cactus enables to the uh, decentralized, the secure, and adaptive uh, integration framework between the blockchain networks. So does that mean to the uh, the we can uh, the integrate to the multiple regions here, like uh, uh, the even in the this uh, the figure that was just a drum of the databases, but in actually those are uh, the blockchain which uh, ind independently uh, working. And from the other uh, user's perspective, the, uh, the, those, uh, the relationship will be automatically solved and intermediate by the hyperledger cactus enables to the, uh, the automatic tra trading to the asset one to the others. So that is a, a concept of the hyperledger cactus. So this concept itself is a very uh, useful, but uh, that was uh, difficult to achieve. So the uh, the the accidentally, uh, the oh, fortunately, uh, the uh, the two different company had a uh, similar uh, solutions or uh, the other considering to the such a uh, the common problem. So the, uh, the when we met the, the, uh, at the hyperledger uh, as a uh, the different con uh, perspective, uh, the, we uh, Accenture and we Fujitsu uh, agreed to working together uh, to use the both code bases, which was already developed and uh, that proved the concept of the such a concept in the, uh, the trading across the blockchain regions. So the very beginning of the uh, the cactus project, we started from the uh, figure out to the what is uh, uh, the uh, the necessary requirement for the design perspective, and that was named the core principle for the interoperability. 
those are uh, the four prospective like uh, maximum positioning for the probabilities and uh, uh, the the middleware of the no middleware uh, the uh, middleman for uh, for the trading uh, prospective and uh, no human uh, middle uh, middleman and also we do not require to the uh, no tokens for the uh, the charging like uh, even the friend the, um, um let's say the micro payment cases uh, that, that is very difficult to when the touring mechanism was involved but we are not required or the, that could be optional so the as a final requirement so the uh, the uh, the, uh, the, that is a kind of uh, the mechanism for the, uh, the industrial transitions. So the from the uh, the 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 figure out into the such a principle that we are uh, build up to the some cactus in uh, the basic design for the minimal functionalities. So the first, first uh, the uh, main functionality of the cactus will be a consist transaction across the multiple ratios. That means to the uh, the if we are to, uh, the the there is a no uh, the when the inconsistency inconsistency will be occurred. Uh, the cactus will try to resolve the, that inconsistency into the normal stage. So the second, uh, the future of the cactus will be uh, uh, the, uh, the, that is kind of mechanism for the uh, protocols, like a propose and approve first, then they execute. So this is a kind of, uh, the, that is very important for the, the case of the trading uh, between to the end users. Otherwise, the, uh, the, those trading will not be successful. So the final feature will be a validity validation. So that is originally from the concept of the Accenture's uh, solutions, right? Uh, because of the blockchain has a certain mechanism outside of the blockchains. So the, we need to the some uh, trust worst party need to be guaranteed their validity. So the uh, the cactus incorporated such an idea for the validation will be guaranteed as a component of the cactus and that uh, the, the mechanism will be uh, incorporated as a part of the systems. So the, let me explain about the uh, common use cases of the cactus. So the, uh, the, the in flow. So the uh, here's a user of the hours. Uh, the will be try to uh, trade into the uh, curve. <laughs> that is a kind of big purchase for her. So the, uh, the it has to be avoided. To the, uh, the the money will be taken by the. Uh, uh, the rogue uh, seller, uh, the, that is a kind of uh, it's a serious problem. So the uh, the first of all, the uh, the artist will be invoked to the trend, uh, the agree on the trade with uh, cactus, and cactus will be promised to the uh, the those uh, the tradition uh, trade uh, the trees of the uh, the transaction will be uh, successfully uh, executed. As a second uh, the step. Uh, the cactus will be uh, the 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 cactus will ask to the artist to transfer the uh, the money to the uh, to be the cactus itself to be escrowed, and then the that uh, the 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 base on the uh, the observation for the such a, uh, the fact, the cactus will also ask to the uh, the the shop seller uh, the customer to uh, transfer the ownership from the, uh, the seller to the RS. And uh, at the same time, the, uh, the, the cactus observed to the transferring to the such a, uh, the, the transferring instrument of the ownership, uh, the escrowed money will be uh, uh, the, the settled for the, uh, the sellers. Now the, uh, the both the, the RS and Bob, or other, the both party of the trading will be satisfied. So the, uh, the, even though this period is not uh, mentioning about uh, the error cases, uh, because of the, uh, the nature of the escrowed money, uh, the, if the money transfer was some reason uh, failed, uh, that, that money will be transferred back to the original owner of the, uh, the, uh, the money, unlike ours. So the, 
Uh, as a final, uh, this is a kind of advertisement for the, our project because of the, our project is not selling to the project. So the, we are encouraging we, uh, all of the you uh, to join us to help or uh, to use to the cactus pro, uh, as a uh, the the common infrastructure. So the, uh, the this is a homepage of the cactus uh, having the uh, the well the all the meeting log on the online in the past and the near future, and also uh, the describing to the GitHub uh, the which was uh, the currently under the development in the uh, the with uh, the many uh, contributors. Thank you very much for now. Thank you, Shingo. That was a, a really terrific overview of where Cactus came from, of the intent behind it, the kind of op basic operating model for it. Uh, I want to pull in now, actually, if you could stop sharing your slides so that we can get to kind of a gallery view of the three of us uh, uh, and, and start in the panel conversation. There we go. Um, great. So uh, I want to introduce now Tracy Kurt. Uh, Tracy has a, a long history of involvement with the Hyperledger project uh, and has been really leading uh, Accenture's efforts there on the technology side from the blockchain space. Tracy, why don't you tell us actually a little bit about what you do at Accenture now and why you got involved in the Cactus project? Yeah, sure. So thanks, Brian. Um, I've been I guess, involved at the Accenture side in a couple of different ways. Obviously, open source is a big space, um, trying to figure out how to bring in the work that we're doing at Accenture into Hyperledger. Um, also, um, architecting solutions for our clients. And I also help train kind of that next level, the, the next group of, of people who are getting into the blockchain space at Accenture. Uh, so really focusing in on technology architecture, and, and focusing on that aspect. So when I first started at Accenture, and Brian has alluded to this, but I, I used to work for Hyperledger and I went over to Accenture. Uh, and when I joined Accenture, the, the very first, one of the very first emails that was in my inbox was, hey, we wanna open source this interoperability asset that we have, uh, how, ca how can we do that with Hyperledger? And so part of the process was helping Obviously, Accenture understand the, the processes that we had within Hyperledger for bringing in new projects, be that through labs or through a top-level project. Um, through a number of different discussions, we ended up with uh, bringing this to labs as an initial start. Um, and then secondly, uh, obviously, through the work that we did uh, with Fujitsu and bringing in more of the community, uh, we wanted to bring this as a top-level project to, to Hyperledger. Um, now, this all started, uh, the work within the Accenture on interoperability started before I joined, um, and it was our labs group that actually has a couple of different patents on interoperability within the blockchain space. One that's focused on kind of that intermediate node, right, which is a, kind of a centralized solution where there's a single node that helps to interoperate across the different ledgers. And then the, the piece that we brought into Hyperledger was kind of an overlay network, where we overlay validators on two different networks and then allow for the communication to happen that way. Yeah, interesting. It, it, there must be a lot of interesting stories in terms of encouraging a, a company like Accenture to become an open source friendly company and know how to engage with the community and, the, and that sort of thing. Um, probably some parallels there to helping enterprises understand how to engage with blockchain technology and uh, I, and, and build these kind of multi-party systems. Um, so, so Shingo, uh, when you started to work on this, this was something ex uh, that Fujitsu had built some internal technology around as well. Um, where did you first hear about uh, what Tracy was working on and uh, how did you, you two decide to start working together on this? Yes, uh, the, well, that was a very uh, the, the good opportunity for us for the, to meet the, together in the Tokyo last summer, uh, the, uh, not last summer, last year. Uh, the, well, actually, the, we had a problem for the to uh, pathway the people to the uh, the, fa the how the, uh, the the interoperability is important for the future of the blockchain world. However, friend, that we had uh, created and published for the, uh, the in the back to the three years ago almost, uh, the no one else understood the, our concept. 
However, the, the Accenture member, uh, they find a very fast conversation. We realized that we use things that that's almost the same thing, so that we, work, uh, we should work together. So that is a very uh, the nice meet up at the uh, place of the hyper region in Tokyo. Uh, the, but uh, uh, the, that is a kind of uh, the goodness for the open source community had a uh, the certain background for the uh, collaborations. And uh, the, our, one of the, my uh, colleague, uh, the Hart Montgomery, uh, who is also the TS member and uh, private conversation with uh, Tracy. And that is actual starting point, I believe. But uh, I, I'm very happy to have uh, this kind of the, uh, collaboration has happened. Yeah. Shingo was mentioning Tokyo. Uh, that was the, and I think Tracy mentioned it too, that was the Hyperledger Member Summit, uh, which is something we do yearly with, with our members. Uh, kind of a technical conference, but really it's more about bringing the community together. together. Uh, because I, I've seen this as well, where um, uh, you know a lot of companies they'll they'll build something interesting internally, something perhaps done for a client or done for a specific project, and then they'll say to themselves, "Hey, this looks valuable. Should we turn it into a commercial product?" Maybe they do that. They go, "You know, this is more kind of an infrastructure kind of piece, and for it to be successful, it really should be broadly shared." And so it makes sense to open source, and they put it under you know their own GitHub repo, and, or maybe they they come to somebody like Hyperledger or the Linux Foundation and say, let's open source it. But really, I, I think both the most valuable thing to do and one of the hardest things to do is for uh, two or more companies to realize, hey, we've, we've started building this thing, but you know we're really stronger off if we combine efforts and build something bigger than what any of us could do before. Um, uh, for either of you, was there any piece that you had to give up in what you had built in-house when deciding to, to work together or to, to work publicly? You know, like like anything that was like, well, we built this feature for this customer, but maybe it needs to be general generalized a step or or some compromise made with, uh, you know, between the two organizations, different visions for how how this would work. I mean, I'm happy to add to that, but I I think that the interesting part about Fujitsu and Accenture both developing the same sort of solutions, right, is that we were able to come together and and take a step back. Right, and start to lay out those first principles behind what should interoperability be? How do we meet those core principles that uh, Shingo laid out? Um, and think about it in a space that's not just your own space, but think about how this works together as a community and how to bring that community together to have those discussions. And I mean, that's, that's part of the great part of what we did at, Hyper, at the Hyperledger Member Summit, right, was the opportunity for us to come together and start those discussions, but then to go back to, you know, for me, back to the U.S., right, and, and uh, bring that forward and make it into something that's real. Yeah, uh, the, I believe to the, uh, the well, the, the, that discussion is also made during to the stage of the hyper Labs. That is an incubation project in the, uh, the of a project before the uh, become the official project. So the, that the time of the some sort of the preparation period, we have discussed a very, very uh, the engineer for the details, right? Here, even though we are living to the different zones, uh, that we can be to. Uh, come together and uh, like we can use to the uh, the figures uh, you know, on the hand drawing and those kind of the other uh, collaboration was happened. So the, I believe that we have the rest uh, the compromise for the post solution because of the we had the beginning we have the same concept and we are designed to the very collaborative. So that is uh, uh, the, what happened for the, uh, the cactus cases. Hmm. Yeah, the uh, um, uh, Hyperledger Labs, which uh, Shingo mentioned, uh, is uh, our attempt to try to create a place where uh, projects that are still pretty young uh, that seem like a step in the right direction that that but you know you don't want to overhype it or oversell it or you know start a whole lot of people deploying it yet um, uh, it's where projects have a chance to kind of just state operate publicly and be associated with hyperledger and get some of the IP protection and and community development tools that we bring um, uh, and that's where cactus started right as the blockchain uh, integration framework 
Uh, we have some other projects there, the blockchain automation framework, which is another uh, uh, Accenture contribution. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, and a couple of other um, really interesting efforts, one in central bank digital currency and others. Um, so if you're looking for like where that leading edge of uh, enterprise blockchain goodness is coming from, take a look, look throughout labs. Um, I want to shift back to talking about the, the features of Cactus and kind of its intended technical direction. Um, I, uh, you know, I know it's it's pre 1.0 right now. It's it's even though it's a it's a it's a full fledged hyperledger project, it's still something that you know is is under active development. Um, could could either of you help characterize kind of where it is right now uh, in terms of developers uh, who want these kinds of features, want to be able to use a platform like this? Is it is it ready for production use, or is it still a ways off? <laughs> Yeah, I hope to do uh, the such a re ready for the uh, the product. Uh, the, but but uh, that is a uh, uh, the very difficult because of the we already started to do some of the code bases. But uh, however, the uh, the for the uh, the, the uh, we are planning to uh, the some sort of the point releases when the, it will, will be a partially available for the let's say the. Uh, that we are uh, the having a connectivity part of the uh, the interoperability uh, in the cactus will be a release earlier. Uh, the, I guess that that will be uh, the estimated in the end of the, this year. You, you can be enjoy the uh, the, uh, the play with uh, some of the uh, implementation as a components. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, the, we are planning for the more uh, seriously working on the uh, the quality of the code uh, at the end of the this year. So the I believe to the uh, the first release could be uh, some uh, somewhere in the spring. Uh, that you can see the uh, as a de uh, first derivative from the project as a whole solution. Okay. That is uh, my I, plan. Anyway, I, I would add to that, right? Um, within Hyperledger, there's a there's a number of stages that projects go through, and they, you know, can start in labs or they can start as a top level project. If they're a top level project, they start in what we call incubation, and this is a state that allows for kind of the growth of the community, right? The understanding of what this community is, how to do releases um, before it becomes what we call an active um, project, right? And so obviously Hyperledger Cactus is still in that incubation phase. We're still um, learning what it is that we want this thing to do. We're learning how to put together the code in a way that's going to allow for this to, to become active and to become production ready. Um, but you know, for me, one of the things I like to, to point out is this is a really good time for people to get involved if they're interested in the space, right? Um, you know, getting in kind of on that ground floor, if you will. Right, maybe the first floor, depending on how you want to look at it. But uh, you know, really looking at how they, how you can add your sort of requirements to the conversation that's ongoing right now. That's great, and I just realized I had my virtual background on as we were talking here. That's why it <laughs> looked a little weird. <laughs> um, uh, and what are the ledger platforms that either are supported today or kind of you consider your first class ones? And then what are some of the others that you think there'll be adapters written for kind of uh, around or soon after kind of the production release? At the current stage of the uh, status of the GitHub, uh, that you can see will be uh, the we can have uh, uh, the uh, Besu and uh, uh, the Goizerim client and the Fabric. And uh, well, the I <laughs> thought the, uh, the well that we are still the working on the more additional region will be uh, supported. So the uh, the the most important part is uh, those uh, the the modules are the independently uh, the developed and co contributed from the different companies. Mm -hmm. So the once it was uh, become ready, uh, the, it will automatically interoperable between uh, uh, the uh, across the multiple regions. So the uh, mm -hmm. the, if we uh, the the people seeing to the, this video on the our open source contributors, uh, the please join us because of the your uh, technology can be part of the cactus in the near future. So that is a very uh, good uh, opportunity for us to see the such a interoperability uh, uh, enforced to the ecosystem uh, which can be delivered from the cactus. Mm -hmm. 
is it anticipated that there'd be support for Corda uh, or some of these other kind of half blockchain, half not kinds of uh, platforms? Yeah, we are working on it. Uh, the, actually, the, uh, the other property solution, uh, both Accenture and Fujitsu already had uh, some implementation like a uh, visual like system. Uh, yeah. But the, uh, the, for the moment, uh, the, the first priority, we are working on the uh, Razor technology, which is available within uh, uh, the Hyperledger project because of the Hyperledger has their own project, which hosts the multiple pro, uh, pro blockchain Razor as a choice. So the, we have a strong reason to host and to accommodate to the, those Razor work together. Yeah, well, we one, took... of the, one of the first okay. demos that, uh, sorry, Brian, one mm -hmm. of the first demos that we did within uh, Accenture itself was uh, transferring assets between Hyperledger and Corda. I, I'm sorry, Hyperledger Fabric and Corda. Very cool. Very cool. So um, is this really just about moving assets or is it also possible to correlate uh, smart contracts across networks too? Or, or, and maybe that's a dumb question, but everything's about moving contracts. But like, could I have a smart contract on one and Voke uh, some sort of functionality from a contract on another network? Is that anticipated? It's, it's actually a very good uh, question about the, the differentiated from the other technologies or similar technology in the market. Uh, the, the, the currently, in my understanding, to the most of the interracial technologies are more concentrated to the transferring to the uh, money assets one to the others. So like a virtual currency or such a kind of things. However, in the looking at the real industries, uh, let's say that we need to the try trace tracking for the fish markets, or maybe we need to the transferring to the cow and asset, that kind of the, uh, the asset will not be equivalent on the different region. That is a gross world. However, the cactus are going to the, uh, of course, to the weekend supporting to the, uh, the actual asset transferring to the, converting to the one to the others. Uh, we also supporting to the corroborating to the one to the others as a trading, as a, uh, the, I showed some example. And also we need, we can uh, develop to the smart contract which can be triggered by the events. Like uh, let's say that we can monitoring to the usage of the electric use utilities, and that can be automatically built using to the smart contract to uh, uh, the uh, implemented by the cactus. So the, those kind of the new use cases was not uh, the possible uh, in the past. Uh, so the, uh, the those kind of the idea or the concept is already described in the scope of the cactus as a part of the white paper. Uh, you can see in the, uh, the week page uh, that you can find the, uh, the white paper. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the, there is a different uh, contribution from the academic group is also uh, involving to, the, to create the, such a use cases of the, uh, the, the target of the, uh, the future of the cactus. Uh, the, we'll be supporting to the, such a, uh, the new use cases uh, the, as a com uh, variant of the cactus. So that is, a, I hope that that is an explanation for the, your questions. Yes. And I think that I think the key to Brian is that if you've got two separate ledgers, uh, you need to be able to ensure that you're conforming to the governance of both of those ledgers, yeah. right? Yeah. And you need to make sure that um, as you transfer that, right, as you create this integration, you're not kind of reintroducing the double spend problem that blockchains are intended to solve. Right? And I think those are the two key pieces when we're dealing with integration and interoperability across ledgers. Does the fact that the semantics are so different on Fabric and uh, Ethereum-based projects like Bezu and, and Quorum and, and Corda, you know, how they treat confidentiality, even the, as I understand it, right, Fabric is uh, execute, uh, confirm, order, right? And uh, isn't Ethereum like the other way around? Uh, I, I forget the terminology used exactly. Oh, but yeah. Uh, doesn't that introduce uh, the potential for... I, I, you know, exactly kind of defeating the double spend problem or, or some sort of coherence issue when trying to conduct transactions between them? 
Yeah, I believe that uh, that was uh, the we call the, the the concept of the uh, the such a, uh, the abstraction for the uh, the the series of the transactions. Let's say the, for the fabric cases, we need the two phase commit for the, and that is not an actual two phase for the databases. Uh, that, that's very different. But however, uh, the, we need to the, uh, the some interaction with, uh, with the ledger technologies, which may be the depend on the implementations they are dependent. However, uh, the, those uh, the, our technology uh, cactus will be uh, the carefully designed for the uh, to absorb to the, such a difference uh, at the level of the province and uh, the, the to distinguish with the communications and the protocols. So mm -hmm. they find the, uh, the, the case of the ledger required to the um, interactions, that interaction will be uh, the implemented as a, uh, the, well, the business, part of the business logic to be involved. And then the, uh, the, the actual communication will be uh, the, almost the same for the, let's say, the, uh, the most of the blockchain support to the JSON format. So the, uh, the, the business logic interpret to the, such a differences and the, that will be described as a, uh, the scenario type of the uh, program. However, that is a kind of, well, the, the part of the challenging of the Cactus project currently. So the, we are still working on the, to absorb the completely. However, we can be uh, already see the, some of the successful use cases as an example. So the, uh, please see the result in near future. Yeah, so this isn't, this isn't really an abstraction layer then, as I understand it. It's not like it, it allows you to ignore the operating system underneath, the ledger underneath, right? Like this is what, remember when Java first came out, it was, you know, write once, run anywhere, uh, uh, yeah. which turned into write once, debug everywhere. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> um, uh, but its intent, right, was to try to make it so as a programmer, you didn't have to care if it was running on Mac or Windows or Linux or, or an embedded device or a big mainframe, um, you know, it, it, but it doesn't sound like that's really possible with blockchain technologies because the semantics are so different between them. And, and you really do end up choosing one architecture over the other, much the same way people might choose MySQL uh, for some types of things and MongoDB for something else and uh, Redis for something else that basically they solve different problems with different characteristics. Is that kind of a fair uh, analogy yeah. to make? Yeah, we are not trying to the invent the whole thing. So the uh, that we are using to the many uh, technologies in uh, on the open source world, of course. So the let's say the other uh, database technology can be chosen by the people. So the that part uh, that could be solved by the plugin technology, uh, pluggable architecture helps because of the we are uh, the absorbing to the such a difference as a choice for the implementers like uh, there is some relationship with uh, I, in favor like uh, that this is a database on, uh, uh, the has to be used for my company. So that kind of the things is always happens like uh, that is the same for the regions. So the, uh, the we will allowing to the programmable architecture helps to absorb to such a difference as a developer's choice. However, the, uh, the we will we should uh, uh, the remove to the pain for the developers like uh, such a uh, too many choices. But uh, we can be uh, uh, the simply configurable for the such a choices as a developer's perspective. Uh, so the, that it would be uh, uh, the, uh, the I hope that that is a kind of uh, the way of the solving to the such kind of the problem as a choice. And and I I think to add to that, right, uh, you, you nailed it right on the head, Brian. We choose the right technology for the, the requirements that we have, right? Uh, and what those requirements are determines what the right technology is. And, and that's the reason that we need some sort of integration sort of framework is because certain use cases will require different ledgers and that's okay, right? Um, we're, we're in a space where one, what is it? One ledger doesn't rule them all. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I think we're in a spot. And I think we're in a spot right now where you know there are prototypes and in some cases active production blockchain deployments in a lot of different industries. Some industries, some use cases, some supply chains don't yet have a blockchain in production, and so they still have kind of the freedom to choose a technology. But I imagine you know a few years down the road here, any business 
that is larger than a couple of dozen employees is going to not have necessarily the freedom to choose which technology they're going to be told here is the standard payments rail here's the standard you know supply chain traceability or the two or three supply chain traceability networks that you're expected to be on if you're in the diamond industry or the electronics industry or or whatever um and so the reality will be that there'll be multiple options out there and so this is to me it sounds like it's a toolkit to make that kind of world easier to deal with than one where you have to come up and be an expert at fabric and bezu and and uh corda simultaneously right kind of so so is it really is it less of an interoperability play and more of an integration kind of thing like does it tracy do you want to speak to like maybe the difference between those terms yeah i, I think that's a it's an interesting question right and i think terminology will always always get us so if you look at the dictionaries, I've been uh, working on some, some work that actually required me to go look up these two particular terms, right? Interoperability is about the exchange of data or the use of uh, data that's being exchanged. Interoperability, I'm sorry, integration is about bringing together multiple systems. Mm. So smaller pieces of, of systems into a larger system. So going back to your question, right? where you're talking about different ledgers for different ecosystems. What we're looking at doing is building an ecosystem of ecosystems, right? So that network of networks, as Shingo had it on his slides, but, but really we're looking at how do we bring all these ecosystems together so that they can communicate, uh, exchange assets, right? Uh, when, when they may be very different sorts of uh, solutions for the particular you know, place that uh, ecosystem that they're trying to solve. Uh, yeah, uh, a very fractal. That's a, that's kind of a very uh, the well uh, the interesting uh, the topic about the uh, the interoperability uh, as a uh, these sessions. So the because of the interoperability in the most of the standardization will be a more like a semantics or data formats or such, such a kind of things. However, uh, the, as the, uh, the Tracy mentioned, uh, the, that is not the issue, I guess. So the because of the blockchain is a kind of uh, the uh, the one world. Uh, the, that can be already uh, completed within uh, that region. However, as a real world perspective, we need to somehow to the, we cannot uh, live with uh, one single region or asset. We need to the, uh, buy the money and uh, food and some sort of the different industry involved in the real world. So in that cases, uh, the well integration is helpful for the case, but uh, uh, the important point would be uh, uh, the solution cannot be the one. So the uh, we in the we cactus is a concept of the arguing to the multiple choices, even the same combination of the region one and region two. Uh, we need to have uh, two different solutions could be coexist. Uh, the regular, we need to choice of the merchant for the uh, buying to the same product. So that mm. is the same uh, the concept for the blockchain world. So mm. the, that is a kind of uh, the actually stimulate to the uh, more aggressive for the market for the trading. Uh, that, that will be, uh, I hope that, that is a kind of uh, the well, ideal world for the blockchain as a token economy, as a common world. So the, that is my uh, the understanding of the uh, the distinction between the interoperability and the integrations. Right, right. It, it also occurs to me just now talking about this that there's one one thing that I think Cactus, if it's successful, can really help us with, which is, you know, technologies have life cycles. Um, I, I still have a VCR uh, here, but I can't really say that I watch a lot of videotapes and. I mean, it's one thing for like us to no longer use VHS tapes and instead to be using Blu-ray discs and instead of Blu-ray discs to be using Netflix, right? But um, these asset kinds of ledgers and these systems, I mean, people haven't really thought about life cycles of these technologies yet. And what really happens at the tail end of a life cycle of a blockchain technology, right? Um, I, think, I think we've been through this Cambrian explosion of a lot of different technologies out there. Um, but haven't really started to think about how do we gracefully, you know, uh, 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 exit a blockchain system for an enterprise that has assets and information and this kind of runtime dependency upon this shared resource. Um, because inevitably there will be a culling of these different platforms. Inevitably, you know, 
options explode and then and then they consolidate, they explode, they consolidate. So one thing Cactus might help us do in the long term, I think, is have a graceful kind of exit for certain blockchain networks into other more leading blockchain networks where there's more activity, right? And make it easier for enterprises to gracefully stage an exit because not everyone's going to be able to dump an old technology all at the same time. Uh, and you won't always be able to just do a hard fork, drop the the hammer and f cause an entire marketplace to on Tuesday at 3 p.m. shift from one technology to the next. And so maybe Cactus helps us with that kind of graceful kind of transition for older technologies. Um, we have just a few minutes left. Uh, any kind of closing thoughts on um, uh, from from either of you on I, 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 you know ways that we can work together as a community uh, to push Cactus forward um, and get it to a production state uh, I, and to be creating some real value for the uh, uh, blockchain community? Well, the, we have the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, you can see in the wiki page of the Cactus, we had the weekly uh, call for the, uh, the core contributors for the, uh, the code bases. So the, we have the, not only the uh, the the code maintenance, we are still the discussion about the uh, the technical topics like uh, the you as you mentioned the uh, the, the traditions uh, uh, from the legacy system blockchain to the new blockchain system like uh, for the post quantum. Uh, cryptography use or such kind of things. That is uh, some sort of the academic uh, perspective of the uh, use of the cactus. So the, that kind of the discussion will be made for the weekly basis for the uh, across the regions. Uh, the, we already we also have uh, uh, the contributor from the European uh, the comp communities. Mm -hmm. So the, we have a slide uh, the second uh, the, that is not a weekly, but uh, we will uh, the scheduling for the uh, the the US Japan uh, US Asia region friendly and the, the US European friendly time. I sometimes they're traveling to the such uh, meetings for the to sneak around, but uh, I. I, I, uh, the, that is a very good opportunity to join the, such a uh, discussion. Uh, so the, if we, you are not willing to the actual coding, but uh, you can have uh, still the space to involve into the, this work. So the, that is my uh, introduction of the, our activities. So the, please join us. Uh, the, that is my last word for this. Thank you. Great. Tracy, any yeah, I, I think that's so key, Shingo, is it's, it's not just developers that we're looking for at this point. It's it's people who have some ideas about the way that this should work, um, you know, have particular examples that they can bring to the community, right? Just the ideas are really key here. And, and so, you know, this community is, as I mentioned, right, still, still in incubation. You can get in on that ground floor, bring in your ideas, um, bring in, you know, if you want to be a coder, uh, help contribute to the code, but um, there's obviously documentation that needs to be done. Anywhere <laughs> that you can think of that, that you want to contribute, uh, yeah. right? There's, there's places for you to, to join and um, participate and, you know, come uh, join us. That's, that's what the best I can say. If, cool. if you join us, then uh, you actually have a say in where this goes. Very cool. Well, Shingo, Tracy, thank you very much. And thank you to all of you for giving us an hour and hope to see you all at a future Cactus working group call, uh, 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 developer call, or on the mailing list or on Rocket Chat. Uh, and uh, see you all later. All right. Thank you. Yep. Yes. <laughs>